This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Miller versus Gully. Mr. Miller, you all have been together eight years but married for five years, and you are bringing your wife to this court because you believe she's cheating. Is that correct? Yes. Tell me about that. Uh, well, I'm here today because I want to know if my wife's cheating on me. Okay. You know, she's done it in the past. I know she's doing it again. Everything she does is shady. She lies about her whereabouts. She never has a reason why she's gone at long hours. Uh, I find things in the house that doesn't belong to me or her. You know, that... <laughs> there's no way that she's not cheating on me. I know this woman. Miss Gully, your husband has brought you here. What do you want to prove to him today? First, I want to say that, I ch yeah, I cheated in the past, but we were planning on getting a divorce. So we were separated, and I don't um, consider that as cheating. But I want to prove to him that I'm not cheating so he can stop all these accusations because I am tired, I'm sick, and it's giving me a headache. I am very tired. What happened in the past? Oh, uh, well, one day we decided to go stay with my sister. I guess it got cluttered, you know? She wanted to go to a friend's house. She wanted me to come with her. I didn't want her to go. So I guess things escalated, you know? So we decided to call it quits. You know, so I say three months passed, so we decided to get back together. So she come back to my sister's house and asked to use her phone. So when I used it, a test come through, and it was a naked picture of her and her ex-boyfriend. On her phone? On her phone. All right, Miss Gully. Did he find a picture of you naked with your ex-boyfriend? No, I showed it to him. I showed it to him. Okay, no. so you don't... When, when you don't we do... got back no, together... No, you yes, didn't show it to yes, me. Yes, I did. When, no, we, got back, when to me. we got back together, I was deciding to come clean. I didn't actually know that my ex had took a naked pictures. I was showing him the text message that me and my ex was, like, going back and forth with. And that's when I noticed that my ex had took a naked picture of me. But I wasn't aware of it. And so you were surprised by that picture also? Yeah, but I, I don't see why he got mad because it wasn't like that. I did it while we were together because we were separated. Okay. You do understand you don't get a break from marriage. It's 24-7, yeah. 365. Well, yeah, yes, ma'am. Then your yeah. boyfriend and girlfriend, you might be able to do that. Yeah. But when you marry, you don't get a break to say, okay, we get breaking our vows and we don't get to take naked pictures with our boyfriends and girlfriends. Note to file, do not take yeah. a picture, a naked picture with my boyfriend. There you go. Do yeah. not. Do not do that. Do not. Ms. Gully, do you love your husband? I love him to death. Do you want this relationship to work? I, I want it to work. I, I mean, I've been with him so long that I... I, I... I, I don't know. I just, I just love him. I, I love his dirty drawers that he got on. <laughs> well, all right. There's a, there's a professional love you don't hear every day, Mr. Cousins. Yeah, that's, that's a standard right there. I'm not sure I'm quite there. I don't know if I... I'm not, I, work, I love I work you. I love you, work you a lot, but I, I don't know if we at the... We'll, we'll uh, get you there. Don't worry about it. We'll get you there. <laughs> so, after all of this, you all are back together... Yes. And yet, today, you still think she's back to her cheating ways. Yes. All right, why do you think that? Well, you know, well, once again, she said she's going to one of her family members' houses mm. to, you know, help them out to do a little work. So, she come in the next morning. So, I'm like, where have you been? You know, oh, I've been over my uh, family member's house helping them out. I said, I called your family member. They say you have, they say haven't seen you all day. She changed the story around like, oh, they wasn't there, so I went to your sister's house. I said, oh, so I called my sister and, you know, she confirmed that she's, she was over there. But, you know, I think my sister's just trying to take up for her because they're best friends. Well, I, I, I went to my aunt's house. I did go to my aunt's house. But she wasn't at home at the time, so I decided to go down to a bar and have a few drinks. Okay. I drunk so much that I didn't want to drive home, so I called my cab and told the cab to take me to my closest friend's house, which is his sister, my best friend, my sister-in-law. And I wanted to drive home, but she took my keys and told me I might as well just have a seat on the couch and crash. Okay. I do want to acknowledge I'm glad you didn't drink and drive. That was smart. Are there any other instances where your wife has disappeared? You know, she, uh, like, she loved her casino nights, the nightly drawings. You know, uh, it was one night that she, uh, went to the casino. She didn't leave till about 4 o'clock that night. Okay. She came in about 5 o'clock that morning. And these are these drawings where you get tickets... I guess what free play and they uh, and they they pull your ticket, you get money and, and things cars. like that. Tell me about that. The drawings are every half hours. 
So they start at five o'clock, okay. and I have four thousand to ten thousand tickets in this drawing. Wow. Okay. So if I leave, I forfeit my name because if you're not there when your name is called, you just, they go to the next caller. So the last drawing is like at two o'clock in the morning because that's when they do the big drawing. And so you're really trying to increase your chances of winning. Yes. And that's why you're out. You're not out with some other man. No. You're out because you're there with this drawing. No. Trying sir. to win. Yes. Here's my concern, Ms. Gully. The court has done some independent research. We have talked with a longtime employee of the casino, and he's informed us that the nightly drawings at the casino that you frequent end at 10.30 p.m. Oh. <laughs> so the big question hanging out there is, where are you from 10.30 to 4 in the morning? if you're not home. And moreover, what are you doing from 10.30 to 4 a.m. in the morning? And with oh. whom? Miss oh. <laughs> 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 Gully? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I be at the casino. I be at the uh. casino. Well... <laughs> But you say you're at the casino for this nightly drawing until 2. The nightly drawing ends at 10.30. So what nightly drawing are you doing that's not at the casino? I, 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 that's where I be at. The, I be right there. I be right there at the casino. I mean, that's where I be at. But there is no drawing all night long. There is no reason for you to be there. You're saying you're there catching the half an hour drawing, and a half an hour drawing ends at 10.30. That means from 10.30 to 5 in the morning, what are you doing? I'm pr I mean, I probably got the time mixed I don't, up. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, the we time mixed up... Probably. Yeah, the time mixed up is the drawings end at 10.30, you thought they ended at 11.30. That's a time mix up. A time mix up is not the drawings end at 10.30, and I've already said they end at 2 a.m., and I'm not getting home till 5 a.m. That's not a time mix-up. That's a problem. And that's why Mr. Miller has this issue, that he thinks you're cheating, because the time elements don't add up. And even with the 2 a.m., you still got three hours unaccounted for. But at this point, we're now talking about six hours that are unaccounted for that you have not been truthful about. <laughs> now, here's the deal. You say you love him. I do. And you specifically said you love his dirty draws, I believe. <laughs> I do. A standard we're gonna get you to. We're not gonna get me there. I don't yeah. see that. But the only way you're gonna walk out of here with him is if you come clean today. And if there's something you need to tell him, I'm inviting you to share it with him. Well, I, I haven't been unfaithful. I haven't. That's, that's your testimony? Yes that you haven't been unfaithful. Yes, sir. That you've been at the casino. Yes, sir. And you have not been with another man all these nights that you're out. No, ma'am. Mr. Miller, what other evidence do you have that makes you think she's cheating? Well, you know, one day I come home from work, you know, I decide to take a good shower, you know, look at some TV. So I sit on the sofa. And it done, oh, man, when I look down, I see a sleeve sticking from up under the sofa. So I pulls it out, and guess what? It is an orange shirt that doesn't belong to me. Or her. I'm a medium. All right, that's, that's not a medium. I'm what, a medium. What size shirt is that? This is a 2X. Lord. Oh. <laughs> so when I confront her about the shirt, she was like, oh, this is my cleanup shirt. I clean, you know, I clean up in this shirt all the time. But if this is your cleanup shirt, why is it under the sofa? Did it look like a clean-up shirt? I mean, we all have rags that we use around the house to no, clean with. No, no, nope, it, it doesn't look like a, a clean-up shirt, you know. It's not but, something she's dusting with. Yeah, no, she said she's dusting she, with yeah, her, she's wearing it. She said she's wearing it around the house, cleaning up. And also, she said she got this from the casino as a souvenir, but it has no logo of the casino whatsoever. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Ms. Gully. Um, that Help is, me that's, understand that's... how this is your cleanup shirt <laughs> and how this is a souvenir shirt from the casino. That's, that's my shirt. I cleans up around the house. I, I'm big at the top. And... Okay. I, I, I buy a bigger shirt 
to clean up so I could be comfortable because I'm mm -hmm. using all kind of cleaning supplies and I don't want to use my regular clothes to get bleach and all that other stuff on it. And for us, him saying that um, I got it from the casino, I never told him I got that shirt from the casino. Reason why he found it under the couch <laughs> is because I th when I got through, I took it off and just threw it up under the couch and didn't think about trying to get it. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Wait a minute, let me... Would you hand that shirt to uh, Miss Golly? Miss Golly, mm -hmm. that shirt is two of you. Now, I'm a fluffy girl, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that shirt don't even fit you. I know. It, and I... you trying to tell me you went and got that shirt to clean house? Yeah, I went to, I went to the um, Salvation Army and got it to clean. Just to use... I, I have certain shirts to use to clean, so I Have you ever seen her clean in the house with that shirt on? Never. So this is news to you? This is very new. New. Very it's comfortable, new news though. To you. New it's, news it's very comfortable. I'm sure. I'm sure it is. is. <laughs> me and you both can get in that shirt. <laughs> what we have here is that Miss Gully claimed to visit a family member and didn't get home until the wee hours of the morning. Yes. She stayed at a casino till 5 a.m. Yes, Your Honor. Allegedly, there from there to 2 a.m. watching the raffle and our independent research indicates they're through with that at 10.30. So we got six hours unaccounted for. You find a mystery T-shirt that me and Mr. Cutler could wear together yeah. that she allegedly <laughs> is using to clean the house. Those are all the reasons you believe she's cheating. Yes. And if you find out that she's cheating... I'm gone. The relationship is over. It's over. Ms. Garland? I'm gonna give you one more chance. I'm telling you, I'm not cheating. All right. Well, this court has done a full and complete investigation of this matter to determine if she cheated. <laughs> At this time, the court would like to call out licensed private investigator Todd Redding. Ron, would you please escort him into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. Mr. Redding, how are you? I'm fine, Your Honor. Thank you. It's good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Your Honor. Would you explain what you and your team did to investigate this case? Absolutely, Your Honor. So my team did a full forensic search of Miss Gully's cell phone. What did you find? Well, Your Honor, we found the deleted profile pictures of at least three men that she's been playing with online. <laughs> You're saying you found evidence that she's been playing with these three men. That's exactly what I'm saying, Your Honor. It turns out that Miss Gully is very involved in online games. And the photos that we found, the profile pictures, were some of the men that she plays online gambling games with. So, Mr. Redding, what was your conclusion regarding infidelity? My conclusion, my team, is that Miss Gully is merely an online gamer. All right. All right. Mr. Miller, as you hear that, what's going through your mind? A lot right now. I mean, I'm... I, mean, I don't even know what to say right now. But, uh, I mean, I'm kind of relieved that, you know, that's the only thing they can't find is you playing online games with these men. But I'm kind of relieved that, you know, there's nothing sexual going on. So, yeah. I, I can almost hear the trembling in your voice. It's probably a mixture of... of... Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy that it's not... It's nothing that she's not cheating. Exactly. Yeah. To further investigate the allegations of infidelity, we had the team perform a forensic voice analysis of Miss Gully. That's right, Your Honor. Let's take a look at the first question. Four months ago, when you claimed to have stayed at the casino until 5 a.m., were you having physical sexual contact with another man? No. Mr. Redding, what did the voice analysis determine? Your Honor, the forensic voice analysis determined that she was being... Mr. Redding, what did the voice analysis determine? Your Honor, the forensic voice analysis determined that she was being deceptive. The voice analysis determined that you were being deceptive. That because my voice was cracking and I was already tired. We have one other question. Yes, Your Honor, we do. 
the orange shirt Rudolph found under your couch belong to a man with whom you have had sexual intercourse? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? Your Honor, the forensic voice analysis determined that she was being deceptive. Whose shirt is that, Miss Scully? Okay, that that was one of my guy friends. Why was one of your guy friends' shirt under the sofa in your house? Because he was um, doing some work around the house and I took it out. Uh, I bet he was. Miss Gully, this is your chance to save your marriage. Everybody knows what's going on. It's time for you now to realize that we all know what's going on and time for you to admit it. So your guy friend was over at the house because you and he were intimate, correct? Yes, sir. And that's his shirt? Yes, sir. Mr. Miller? I'm done. I'm, I'm sorry. I, um... I just thought that, you know, we wasn't rocking anymore, so I decided to just, you know, have other options. And I apologize to you. You all have been together for a couple of years, and this new relationship may be on its last legs, depending on what happens here today. Is that right, Ms. Burnett? Yes, Your Honor. Tell us why you've initiated this case. I feel like Charles has been super shady after I've had a life-threatening hospitalization. And um, ever since I've been better, he's um, been very distant and he's changed his whole attitude towards me, basically. I just feel like he's up to something and I would like to know, you know, what before I continue to try to spend the rest of my life with a man that's not solely spending his with me. So something's changed. Something's changed. Something's different. Something's different. And you think that something different has to do with some other woman or other women? Maybe. Possibly. But you know it ain't just you. It's something else. He's he's different. All right, she says you're different. What are you doing different, Mr. Modern? Well, she, she broke up with me because I was too clingy, so I'm not trying to be too clingy no more. She, she said you were too clingy. Yeah, that's why the reason she left me in the first place. So, Ms. Burnett, what does too clingy look like? I couldn't go to the bathroom without him in the beginning. Like, literally? He, <laughs> literally. He I, treated me like I was a chunk of gold. He'd put my shoes on for me. If I was to get up to go to get me something to drink, like, he'd almost knock me out of the way just to go get it for me. And, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing where this is bad. Tell me. Well, I, I mean, um, you know, it just got it just got too much for me, I guess. And then since we've been back together, like he, like I said, he, I, I did have a hospitalization where I was, I almost died, and um, he he came back to take care of me. And ever since I was able to do for myself, that's when I've noticed that he was slipping. All right. You got a man who wants to take care of you, who's doing things for you. It sounds like he's almost waiting on you hand and foot. You know how many women would, would kill to have that, don't you? Yes. I mean, you say he's too clingy, and Mr. Martin, you kind of making the rest of us look bad by doing all that. I like, she says, I found the perfect man. He treats me right. He's doing for me. And you do what every woman would do, break up with him. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> What do you do after the breakup? I leave and I go back to my hometown where I was from. Okay. And then I, I met somebody else and I was in a relationship. And when she had this life-threatening thing going on, I rushed back to her. I dropped everything that I had going and came straight back to her. He wasn't too clingy then, was he? Well, no, I mean, he, he literally had to do everything for me at that point. I mean, as far as washing my hair, including wiping my butt. You know. Well, that's that's a lot of info. <laughs> okay. All right. And he covered yeah. it all. Yes. All right, so you get back together and you say you've seen a change. Tell me about this change you see. Um, well, we have one vehicle. I would take it and I would drop him off at work and go about my business, come pick him up. Well, one day I went and got him something to drink and a pack of cigarettes and I went to take it to him and he was not there. And all of his little buddies at work, it's construction, mm-hmm. you know. Um, nobody knows where he went. Uh, he's at a different job site. Most of the time, it's uh, hotel work. Uh-huh. So one can only imagine 
It's very accessible, very easy to make it happen. Yes. Well, where did his coworkers tell you that he was? I had three different stories for where he was. That's that what I was getting ready to say. They should have got together first. Yeah, I yeah. said, okay, yeah. huddle. Yep. This is what we're gonna tell her. Yeah. But see, it's kind of hard to get all my coworkers on the same page when the boss man comes to me and says, hey, I need you to run to do this job real quick. Like, I'm a maintenance man, plus I'm a remodeler, plus a uh, construction worker. Like, I remodel in the hotel right now, and at the time that she came and surprised me at work, I got sent to mow grass at another site. So you're saying you weren't somewhere with another woman. You were doing no, your work. I was at my job. What did you say when he came home? Well, I have to ask him where has he been because it should not take him three hours to get home and he only works 20 minutes down the road. All right, so tell me about that. Um, I have submitted some uh, evidence for y'all. Okay. Do you need to go to the plasma? Yes. All right. Okay, so this is basically a map from where we're at. Um, in Chattanooga is where he works sometimes, and also I give him the benefit of the doubt and uh, even factored in another job site location in Hickson to our house in Saudi. Okay, well, it should take only 22 minutes, and it takes three or four hours. And then again, even if he works in Hickson, it should be less time than that because it's closer, but it still takes him two, three, four hours to even get home. Why is it taking you three hours to take a 22-minute trip? Traffic. Traffic gets bad because of construction. <laughs> okay, so you telling me he's coming on three hours later uh, for a trip that's 22 minutes or 18 minutes. But if it's construction going on, if it's construction, construction means traffic, and traffic means a delay. Even and if you had construction, it's not going to take three hours for an 18-minute trip. They be taking no. out bridges and... Adding lanes, exactly. taking lanes. Yeah, I mean, tra right. traffic has been horrible. You haven't driven through Chattanooga, have you? So this is what y'all gonna do? <laughs> I don't know. All right, all right. I'm giving him the traffic. All right, okay, no, no, y'all go ahead. So what else you got? I well, know why, it's something Why else don't is. you think it's the construction, Miss Burnett? Because I have a uh, live traffic cam footage. <laughs> Whoop, there it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What do you have? Okay, so here it is, the live cam from Chattanooga to Saudi. This is on a Monday at peak hours in your construction zone that he's hollering about with absolutely no traffic, no 18-wheelers. So this is about the time of day he would be coming home from Chattanooga to where you all live in Saudi Daisy. Yes, Your Honor. Not a traffic, not a nothing. <laughs> mm. All right. Okay. And then another one would be from uh, Hicks and Saudi, um, a Tuesday again, peak hours, no traffic. And the and the empty lane is going towards your house. Yes, this right here would be going towards. This is coming from. There's another tractor trailer coming the wrong way. Looks like it's headed right toward me. Yes, it is. <laughs> boom. boom. <laughs> All right. Is that it? Yes, Your Honor. Ma'am, please step to your podium. All right, Mr. Martin. Okay, Your Honor. You know, you you had me out there. Rush hour is 5 o'clock. And when I'm going from Hickson, I don't come straight home. I got to go back and set clock out before I can come home. What else you got? Is that it? Okay, so uh, going through a phone, when I can figure out the passcode, um, it's like it's a brand new phone. Like we literally just bought it and took it off the shelf and tried to turn it on. There is no pictures, there is no contacts, there is no messages. So you're going through his phone? Well, I have. Yes, I'm not even gonna lie, I have. You have gone through his phone. <laughs> so he's wiped it. Wiped it. So there so, should be some record of, of at least something. Text I mean, or ordering something. pizza or something. I mean, there's nothing. So do you have an app on it that erases it when it's not you? No, Your Honor. Uh, see, I'm used to it back in the old days, flip phones. See, oh, we, uh, we, had, we phones. Had just recently upgraded to these smartphones. Okay. And see, I do construction. And if I don't got a lock on the phone, then my pocket, like, deletes everything. And I, I, it just recently happened to where I had to go get one of my friends to go get everything on all my apps back. Miss Burnett, are you buying that? No. No, Your Honor. You think he's cheating and deleting, right? I'm pretty positive he's doing something. This, this new smartphone thing, it ain't for me. I'd rather go back to the flip phone where no. I won't have these accusing problems. I won't have these problems where, oh, my pocket deleting everything. I'd rather stick with the flip phone, Your Honor. 
I tell me that you have nothing else. Sometimes he would say he's gonna go visit uh, family members and uh, we're not allowed to go. He'll have to go by and say, oh, I'll just be right back real quick. But three or four hours later, see, that that's what's getting me. Every time that he's gone or disappearing, or it's always that time frame, the three, three or four, four hours. hours. I mean, I don't want to be too clingy. So I, it, I like to leave her at home, you know, <laughs> and go handle the business by myself. All right, so oh. the one time you want him to be clingy, <laughs> the one is. time you want him to be clingy, he's not. I think he's going somewhere else. And and let me just ask you, does this family member pri the, that he's primarily visiting, do they live in the area? No, not really. It's, okay. it's kind of a little bit of a drive, but um, not three or four, not three hours. four hours. Okay. No, not to, I'll just be right back, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. My family member helps us out. Okay. With financial situations. Okay. Okay. I go to the grocery store and pick up funds. Okay. To get to help us through so oh. I can get my next paycheck and we can go on about our life. But see, I, my, my family members live two hours past Atlanta. They live in Columbus. Okay. And we live in Chattanooga. There's no way that I could drive down there, see my family members, and then drive back and be back in two, three hours. But you know what would eliminate that? Is if you let her go with you. I mean, I, she says I'm too clean. Uh, Your Honor, I don't see why she has to go and stand in line with me just to get funds when... I'm making sure ain't nobody else standing in line with you. I go, oh. and I get funds, and I come right back. I don't know. I, it, it, I, I tell you this, whatever it is, it's gotten you here. Yeah. That's, that's the main problem. I the ain't hiding nothing, Your Honor. All right, well, we about to find out whether you hide or not. This is the evidence we have, Mr. Cover. All right, what do we got? He used to worship the ground she walked on to the point of being clingy, she says. Now he ignores it. He's distant. He won't let her go with him places. He disappears for hours, this magic window of three to four hours. His phone is wiped clean. Now, the question is, Miss Burnett, if he is cheating, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have to separate. All right, so everything is at stake, Mr. Cutler. Everything. Everything's on the line. Everything's on the line. So, what did we do? We did a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court will call a certified polygraph examiner and licensed private investigator, Kendall Shull, to determine, is he cheating? Ron, please report Mr. Shull in. Mr. Show, good day. How are you? Good day, Your Honor. I'm good. How are you? It's good to see you. Good to see you. The court had a cybersecurity expert do a forensic analysis of Mr. Modern's phone, and you have the results of that investigation, correct? I do, Your Honor. Your Honor, during our investigation, our cybersecurity expert came across an unusual situation with Mr. Modern's cell phone. Mr. Modern had no files in his deleted folder. He also had no text messages, no photos, no videos, and no apps, which is certainly suspicious. However, we did find, Your Honor, multiple calls to a motel. Mr. Modern? Your Honor, that is my family member living at that motel. So the family member you're visiting or a different family member? It's the family member that she's talking about that I visit. Okay. But, Mr. Martin, how coincidental is that that you have no other, nothing on your phone except calls to this one motel? And you're saying it's a family member? Yeah. You sure there's no woman there that you're seeing? Yep. All right. Mr. Shaw, in addition to the cybersecurity review, you also did a polygraph examination of Mr. Modern. Is that correct? I did, Your Honor. All right. You asked Mr. Modern, when you leave work, are you meeting up with women for sex before going home? What was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. <laughs> He's 
said they're pretty confident. I see that. All right. You also asked, Mr. Modern, when you tell Miss Burnett that you're visiting your family member, are you meeting up with another woman to have sex? What was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. We got one more question. You asked Mr. Modern, since getting back together with Ms. Burnett, have you had physical sexual contact with any woman other than Ms. Burnett? What was his response to that question? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? Well, on this question, the lie detector determined that he was also being truthful. All right, Ms. Burnett, what you got to say? You smiling? I feel silly. <laughs> I think it's your turn to be clingy. I do apologize, baby. Oh, my goodness. I accept your apology. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Cutler, what are your words of wisdom to Mr. Modder? You need to find a different route to work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly there's uh, a love between you all. Clearly you want to be together. This is a man who cares about you deeply and... You know, you got to stop being so suspicious. Yes. You have to stop making her so suspicious. You all have been dating for four years, and you're engaged. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you're scheduled to be married in 10 days. Yes, sir, 10 days. Mr. Parker, tell us why you brought your fiancé to court today. I believe my fiancé is cheating on me. We're about to get married in two weeks. If she is, then the wedding's off. Ms. Robinson, are you cheating on him? Oh, Your Honor, I am not cheating on him. I am here today to prove that I am being loyal to him. I understand that I have messed up in the past, but, you know, I'm ready to move on and I'm ready to be married and I'm ready to take on that last name. But you must have done something to make him think at this point, 10 days before the wedding, that you've done something. What is it that you've done to make him think that? Your Honor, I haven't done anything. It's just his insecurity. Um, I had an incident the other day when a guy bought my daughter a sneaker bar. He blew out of proportion. So, did you think that she was involved with this man? Yes. Cl clearly, he, he bought her a candy bar, so that means he knows you <laughs> and, he, and he wants to be a part of that. So, are you really, truly willing to cancel this wedding based on today's results? Yes, I do. And I want my deposit back for it, too. Okay, I... you put down a deposit for the wedding place? The event, yes, sir, I did. I put out a $250 deposit down. If you have to cancel, you think she should have to pay that money back? Yes, because I, I, I suspect that, you know, if she's cheating on me and I'm paying all this value to make sure you have the most beautiful wedding in the world that you want, it's gonna, it's gonna, something's gonna happen. I cheating. When this lie detector to come back to say that I am not cheating on him, he's gonna look really crazy. He's gonna be paying it back, <laughs> not I. All right, so clearly you wanted to get married. Yes, yes, Your Honor. There had to be some happy times. Yeah, we had great times. I mean, Tell me about times. that. All right, so there were times where, like, she would, like, come in and, you know, I'd come inside the house, she'd have a lingerie on, looking wonderful and everything. And, Ow! And she'd, like, you know, she'd cook, like, steak and lobster tails for me and, like, have the, have the bath, you know, bubble bath running and everything. So, you know, it, she was, like, real romantic, like, little petals on the floor, you know, just making me all happy. I mean, I feel like the happiest man in the world. And see, and that's how you treat a man. <laughs> That's how you treat a man All right, right hold on. Lobster yeah. tails, yes. steak. Steak and lobster and rose petals and drawing the bath and... Yeah, are you taking notes? You I'm taking, taking notes. Taking notes. Uh, uh, Ms. Robinson, you make it hard for a sister. I'm just... <laughs> okay, all right. That, that's how you do it. All right. All right. Duly noted. Okay, so tell me what you loved about Mr. Parker. Um, everything. He was always a go-getter. He, you know, he always, always made sure our family was straight. He was just an all-around good guy. It's just... I can see that. So, Mr. Parker, all right, sounds like it's good. Great relationship. What went wrong? Why are we here? <clears throat> well, the thing that went wrong was, you know, the beginning of this year, you know, I went, I kind of went out of town for a little bit, and then all of a sudden, you know, things changed. She began to have locks on her phone, she lied about where her whereabout was. I have a um, sure. proof as well. 
Okay. All right. All right. So, yeah. you know, uh, she, she's, she's supposed to be in at work, right? What she work at is right here. So all of a sudden, you know, Facebook tell me she's in Camp Creek. That doesn't mean anything. She may have gone to, to pick something up or meet a friend or... It's grab some lunch. lunch or something. <laughs> but I called her and she told me she was at, babe, you know, baby, I'm at work, babe. Oh. Right now, we busy right now. It's real busy. I'm gonna call you back later. So I said, okay, you know, but she, she's right here. I know okay, Miss Robinson, right there, right here. did you lie to him? That's a <laughs> yes or no? Kind of, sort of. Okay, well, how did you kind of sort of I lie? Was at, I was at work. I went and got some lunch with a friend. We was there for a, a little while. I wasn't even there that long. That's not but why she, didn't she not, tell me? she told me. Because he, he blow things out of proportion, like... You do realize, though, when you're not truthful, you just... You blow it when you're telling the truth. And that's what's happening here. Have you lied to him in the past like this? Yes, Sean, I have. So, no wonder he doesn't trust you. I mean, Mr. Parker, you can come back to the podium now. Okay. This appears to be just an innocent lunch with a coworker. What has she done in the past that makes you believe that she's cheating? She had cheated on me before. We split times. Then, all of a sudden, you know, she came back with me and said, you know, this is your baby. We had a baby. So, you know, I took her back. And I'm like, okay, you know, we have a baby. So, but then I kind of had suspicions about the baby. I'm like, is this really my baby as well? So we decided to go on fraternity court. And then, you know, That's we, we went on there get it done. And, and they it came back the results that the baby was not mine. Ooh. So, yeah, so then, you know, I'm, I'm All right. a little heartbroken <laughs> off that. <laughs> Miss Robinson? He will not let that go. I understand that I did... What? Well, oh, I oh, understand oh. I did it <laughs> wrong in the past. That's the beginning of our relationship. This is not a let it go situation. I mean, telling somebody you, you have right? their child and it's not their child is serious business. You right. And then when you tell these little bitty lies, I'm at, I'm not, I'm at work, but you really at lunch, you're doing this and you're really there, there's no reason for him to trust you. All right, so, Mr. Parker, do you have any other reason to believe that she's cheating on you? One night, we're cuddling on that night. You know, it's a good night. Then, all of a sudden, the phone rings. It's like 12 o'clock at night. Again, it rings again. So, you know, I'm like, dang, what's going on? Same number. A random day, I just checked the phone. I was just that same official number. It's like for three hours, she's been on the phone with that number. She tells me it's a bill collector. Don't nobody call me at no midnight. I'm not finna sit here and say, oh, it's a bill collector. No one bill collectors don't call me. Why no you tell me it was a bill collector? Did you recognize the number? No, I, I did not recognize the number. I don't save numbers number. in my phone, and I don't try to remember it. Because I, I looked at it, and then she had a three-hour conversation, so... Who did you talk okay, to for three hours? If he at work, I, I don't talk to... I ain't talking to nobody for three hours. I don't know who he's talking about. How long did you talk to him? No hours, hours, not then, day, none of that. Why would I talk to somebody three? I know he's gonna go through my phone. Okay, mm -hmm. so there was a midnight call two times. Mm -hmm. And then at some point later, how much later did you go back and see she had talked to that same number for three hours? I guess it was like three days after. Ms. Robinson? I, I, mean, I don't even know this number. He you don't know. have any recollection it, of it, a... You know, it might have been him. I'm thinking he might have texted, was calling me from a text-free app number and trying to get me caught up in something. That's what I'm saying. received, though. And, okay, and why talked... would you think your... Why <laughs> would you <laughs> think your fiancé, your beloved who wants to marry you, would try to create a situation where you look like you're he cheating. He likes to play those little games. It's like the same... Have you it's ever done like that before? like to come in and like to smell through the house thinking somebody's in okay, there. Okay, wait a minute. Is this true? Well, you know, Your Honor. No! No, no I no, don't know! No. <laughs> I don't know, because, I mean, that doesn't happen. I mean, I, like I said, I had suspicions I'd be like, about stop the... Uh, it. I had suspicions about the 12 o'clock phone call, so, you know, I'm like, well, if I'm at work, then ain't no way in the world that she's been... If she calls somebody for three hours, Somebody gotta be coming in my house. Okay, tell me what he does. Comes in from work, and he'll walk around, try to looking in the bathrooms and everything. So I'm like, what are he doing? He pacing back and forth, and he be sniffing in the air. I'm like, wait, what are you doing? I, you know, he's like, I'm just trying to make sure ain't nobody been in my house. And he hit it with, oh, maybe I need to put cameras up. Or I need, I'm like, what are you doing all that for? And how does that make you feel? It makes me feel like a prisoner in my own relationship, in my own home. It makes me very uncomfortable. All right, so Can you, you think he's just being paranoid? I think he's being very paranoid. I don't think so. My sister told me that she saw her, you know, getting drinks with a man, you know, relaxing with a man, you know, just being with a man, like hugged up with him. Oh. That's what she told me. This court has tracked down Mr. Parker's sister. 
Ron, would you please escort Mr. Parker's sister into the courtroom? How are you today? I'm good, Gunner. Uh, tell us your name, please. Renisha Parker. And you have information that Ms. Robinson was at a lounge. Can you tell us about that? Um, yes. It was like, um, I went to the um, bar and I'm with my homegirls, three of my homegirls. Next thing I know, um, I turn around, I see Ms. Robinson. She was like all hugged up and he was like rubbing on her booty. And I'm like, okay, when you say you... hugged up, was it like this? <laughs> Were they like this? Um, no. Were they like this? Um, Were they like a little this? A bit more closer. Closer? Closer? Way closer. Okay, okay. Well, we can't get much closer up here. <laughs> yes. wow. All right. So is that true? All right, Ms. Robinson. Who were you at the lounge with? I was at the lounge with a friend, but we wasn't all... A friend? We wasn't... We wasn't all hugged up. We just had a couple drinks. We didn't... We had a, a normal little hug. What friend was hug. this? Who, it who wasn't was this? no all like this and Male that. or female friend? It was a male. Okay. okay. Club okay. is full of ballers. <laughs> right? True. Do you have any other reason to believe that your brother's fiance is cheating on him? Of course. Okay, what information um, do you have? Another reason is our through New Year's Eve party. And next thing I notice, a guy pull up. I'm mm -hmm. like, who is this? And next thing I know, she all uh, kissing on him. What? What? Yeah, she's kissing on I'm him just... and what? he's rubbing her booty again. Is and it I'm... the same guy? No, it's a different guy. Oh, oh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Where was uh. your brother? Hold up. He was gone. He was not even there. Okay, so... Wow. I'm just here about this. What do I look like bringing another male around my fiancé's sister? That's what I'm thinking. knowing how her mouth going to run, that just don't make sense to me. Her, her mouth but sure you, is. But you go up to <gasps> But you me bet <gasps> not to tell him. Y'all not feeling Okay, so, yeah, it. tell me but how that happened. Do tell him because do I look it like was a your side piece. Rub okay, wait, wait, wait. Her. Did you so confront Miss Robinson about this gentleman? Um, oh. yes. I had looked at her and I was like, who is this? Look why is you bring like why is you bringing another guy into the house when my him? brother Bruh, like come, pays come, rent? Come stuff. And I'm like, uh, come on too? now. Come get your girl. And what did bro. she say? And then she her? was like, please don't tell, please don't tell. And I'm like, she's just begging me not to tell and stuff. And I'm like, I'm gonna mind my own business. I'm gonna stay in my lane. So and it's like oh, one a double time, room. Please. We got a double room, and it's like she's in there having Sex. No, no. Well, not finna invite no male over and sit here and have sex with him with you in the other room. So you deny all of that? N yes, because I didn't invite no guy. She invited me and I came as myself. Mr. Parker, I can see by the look on your face you're not buying this. Not at all. I mean, it's like, it's really crazy. It got me like, wow, what's going on? Like, I just, the day I just found out some new, you know, some new crazy... You didn't know I anything about this? Said. I had, I have never heard that it's come out of my sister's mouth to the day. All right. Mr. Parkin, you've indicated that you have some concerns that Ms. Robinson's about her whereabouts and uh, about what she's doing, her lying to you. Uh, the court has engaged the services of a cybersecurity expert. Ron, would you please bring in Mr. Gregory Evans? Yes, Your Ms. Evans, how are you today? I'm doing great. And yourself? Doing good, doing good. So, in today's case, you performed a full forensic examination of her phone. Is that correct? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Mr. Evans, Mr. Parker has had some concerns about Ms. Robinson's whereabouts. Uh, did you find anything on her phone to support his suspicions? Here's the, the situation. The first thing I noticed was she had location services turned off, like her Google Maps. So, it does not show any history on her phone. Mm. So, Ms. Robinson, are you trying to hide your location? My location is always on. I don't even pay my location no attention because when I travel, I travel. Like you say, Facebook gonna tell it all. Well, I cut it off for now, it's gonna move with me. There's a difference there. On maps, it'll give you the exact address. What maps shows on, on Facebook, what it shows is, is like your city or that general area. Okay. So, there's a difference there. All right. Mr. Evans, what about Ms. Robinson's communications with other people? Did you find anything about that? I went through her phone, and I did find one thing that was very interesting. Okay. I saw that she was text messaging her ex, and it was at least 20 messages back and forth. Ms. Robinson, why are you texting your ex? Me and my ex were just texting yesterday, and I saw him text messages. 
So what do you text? aware who my ex is. But what do you text your ex about? Nothing strange, like, regarding my, my daughter or anything, my little girl or... Mr. Evans, what were these texts about? All the text messages were, and she is correct, was about the child. Okay. In fact, if there's any indication, reading the text messages, she couldn't stand her ex. In fact, she even... Ch- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not at all. She even changed his name to a name I can't even mention, so when it rings, <laughs> that's what shows up. So she's oh. innocent there? Yes, she is. All right. That's one. That's one. We gotta go to the... Now, I want the other one. In addition to the forensic analysis of Ms. Robinson's phone, we have also had her submit to a lie detector test. And we have the results. Ron, would you hand them to me? Yes, sir. Ms. Robinson, you were asked, have you had sexual contact with anyone besides Mr. Parker that he doesn't know about since October 2015 until now? And you responded, no. The lie detector determined you were being truthful. I'm going to assume that because it's marriage time now that you're going to drop your suit for... to get your wedding deposit back and you'll go forward with the wedding. Yeah, I'm going to go forward with the wedding. Just because, you know, she been, she been truthful. And I see my sister, I don't know what she's uh, seen. And... <laughs> the court is going to dismiss your lawsuit uh, since you are withdrawing it. Now, Mr. Parker, I need to talk to you. You've been coming in smelling the house. You've been coming in checking phones. You getting ready to get married in two weeks. You have got to let that go. Okay. okay. Can you look at her and say, we're moving forward? Yeah, we move forward, this baby. Thank you. <laughs>